The telephone was invented in 1876. It was like a miracle at the time to convey people's voices across a piece of copper. It's like now we would imagine teleportation. Uh, Scotty beam me up, you know, something like that. Uh, and that was the first really mass means of communication. The huge monopolies were built on rolling out huge amounts of copper. These threads of glass are destined to have tremendous impact on our lives. By the end of the 80s, there was a lot of research done on uh, fiber. Fiber was considered the technology of the future. It would take yesterday's copper telephone lines 21 hours to transmit the same amount of information. And some people said, um, the copper is dead. Copper is dead. Copper is dead. Uh, obituaries were already written. We declare copper dead. Yes, it is possible to pull fiber, but it's probably not feasible to do it all the way to the end user. You dig up the neighborhoods, that really makes it expensive. So you would have a very unbalanced situation where you have lucky few which have fiber early, and the unfortunate ones who have to wait 20 years. The very large population has copper lines, and if you can find a way to bring the internet over those copper lines, you're really going over the top. The first version of DSL came out, ADSL. It transformed this old copper infrastructure into superhighways. It was fundamental in the birth of the internet. Then you have VDSL, which stood for very high speed. The question now became, how can you get even more capacity over that copper line? The problem is that all of those copper lines are in the same binder and they're interacting with each other. Each of the lines is in fact a kind of antenna and picks up a little bit of the signal of the other lines. And the crosstalk is becoming the limiting factor. Instead of working with all this crosstalk, it moved into, let's try to get rid of it. And that's where vectoring came in. I know what that copper line is saying. I know what that copper line is saying. I know what that copper line is saying. I'll just add all of those signals together, inverse the signal, and suddenly you don't hear the crosstalk anymore. At the time when we started this, people thought, this is crazy, this is too complicated. I think that's also really important to, to dare to take a step forward, to dare to, to dream. I thought, let's give it a chance. The algorithmic team was in Murray Hill, and here in Antwerp we had the DSL team. Putting those two teams together, you, you had sort of different dynamics and different personalities. The Murray Hill team were dreamers, so they had great ideas from a theoretical perspective. We, on the other hand, we took a more pragmatic approach. At the end of the day, you can write as many equations down as you like. Reality will always find a way to show you exactly what you forgot in your equations. The whole team decided to build a variant of the product that was called HOPE. The HOPE was essentially something we cobbled together from equipment that was slated to go to the wrecking yard. It was a hybrid online, offline precoder engine and we hoped that it would work. <laughs> that's, that's essentially it. <laughs> For this one meeting, we committed to give a status on HOPE, but uh, I, we were not there yet. This meeting was the next morning. We had been working through the day to get things going. Uh, still didn't succeed. We worked all through the night and the meeting was at nine o'clock in the morning. And somewhere around seven o'clock, it actually started working. We felt relieved. <laughs> we realized that our algorithms do actually work. The question was, how do we turn that into a product? These are real reels that, that AT&T was using for, say, a hundred years. And we actually use these reels to do the experiments of vectoring. The magic number was 100 megabit per second. With factoring, we have been able to hit that number. And we are actually doing the same thing again with G.Fast. We say, can we get gigabit per second, a 10x improvement over what vectoring already could do? Again, in the beginning, people thought, wacky. And, and yeah, now it's a reality. This is the same attributed to Mark Twain, 
the reports of my death had been greatly exaggerated, and I feel that way about copper. People felt it had reached the end of the line. Copper's death. I heard this so many times in my life. I heard it as a challenge, or I heard it as an insult. But every time we found power to continue because we believed we were right. We proved them wrong. Uh, copper is not that. We have been able to turn the copper into gold.